honeybees, or as some call them, industrial bees, because they are used in the agricultural industry, which it turns out is a pretty bad idea. Don't get me wrong here, I love the honey, but two thirds of them are primarily used as pollinators, which can be really disastrous in some cases. And also, the pollination quality of honeybees so let me sum up everything that's wrong with the current use of honeybees. They work rather slowly compared to other species. They cover larger areas than other species, which inherently leads to increased pesticide slash disease transmission, which can kill the honeybees themselves as well as the other species that is transmitted on. Since honeybee colonies are big, they can easily outcompete solitary species or other pollinators, which makes them invasive. And lastly, they can't even pollinate some of the more most beloved food crops, which we'll talk about later. Now, I'm sure you've already heard that bees are endangered. Well, that's true, but not for the western slash European honeybee. They are the same, by the way. The reason is quite simple. Honeybees make honey. People like honey. People care about honeybees. We have beekeepers standing to them, giving them shelter, treatment, and so on. They are actually well off. The same thing can be said about all the other species, though. They really are endangered, and thanks to that, so are we. Okay, the time has come. Now that we know that honeybees get more credit than they deserve, let's look at all the other bees and some high-tech stuff that pollinates better. So, there are some 20,000 species of bees, but only 5% lives in colonies. This means the rest is solitary. We have carpenter bees, blueberry bees, bumblebees, sweat bees, sugar bag bees, or for example, lots of men like booby. Well, there is a great plentitude of bees, let's leave it at that. Some of them don't care about what plant they eat from, but some tend to specialize for example only on one plant family, like the squash bee. This depends mainly on the morphology and stuff. But the outcome is that for us to have as much food as we can, we should preserve as many bee species as possible, ideally all of them, because no bee can pollinate every plant or food crop. For example, honeybees have no shot at pollinating peppers or potatoes or tomatoes and members of the capsicum and solanum genuses in general. Because to release the pollen inside of their flowers they have to be vibrated at a special sonic frequency. Which honeybees frankly don't give a fuck about, they just suck the nectar and dip. On the other side, bumblebees and some other species have evolved to make the frequency in that they vibrate their body by revving the flight muscles out of gear. Which is a formulation I took from Epiculture. And guess what is coffee pollinated by? 33 species of bees. <laughs> Honeybees are only one of them. So less bees equals less coffee. Then we have these guys. Turns out that since peppers, tomatoes and so on need a sonic frequency to release the pollen, you can pollinate them manually with a sonic toothbrush. How do I know? Well, for some guys with greenhouses done in Australia, it's literally the only option. Because there is a ban on commercial bumblebee pollination. And now to the serious engineering solutions that are still in development. First, we have the Robobee. It's an invention of the Harvard professor Robert Wood. Although the idea of a robotic swarm seems exciting, they are still working on how to make the thing fly properly, so I don't think it will go mainstream in the near future. And second, Poli. This machine already pollinates some acres in the US, Europe and even Australia. It's an invention from Israel that skims down the lines of crops in a greenhouse, detects flowers with a camera and decides if they are ready to be pollinated thanks to an AI algorithm. If yes, it sends out sonic sound waves that do the job. The company behind it, Aruga, claims that poly can improve fields by up to 5% when compared to pollination by bumblebees. And 20% when compared to the toothbrushes. Also, they plan to equip the machine with all sorts of features like pruning, plant lowering or disease and pest detection in the future. Future. My guess is that in a few years, large-scale greenhouse production will consist of these guys doing all the labor and a few head growers, each overwatching a certain area. So, what did we learn? The western slash European honeybee isn't endangered. All of the other bees are. We, and the nature, need as many of them so that all plants are pollinated and can reproduce. Because no plants on earth means no higher forms of life on earth. 
And as a bonus, if you wanna promote all the other bees and non bee pollinators, it's best done by planting specific plants in strategic spots in your garden or on the edges of your fields. But unfortunately, there is no time left for that in this video. I hope you liked it and thanks for watching. Hmm. <laughs>